All right, sorry, started on the wrong page. All right, so similar to the last section, we're starting off with some review of basic solving. So here we have a right triangle. Remember, it's always important to know where that C is, hypotenuse. So in this case, we're going to do 4 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. I'm going to save a little bit of time. 4 squared plus 8 squared is 80. Okay. We have to square root both sides to get rid of that C squared. And remember, this will break down. We're trying to find the biggest number that goes in to AD. Even though 4 goes in, we want a bigger, better number. So it's 16 times 5. Remember, radical 16, radical 5. This simplifies to 4 times radical 5. That is C. All right. On number 2, we have a 45, 45, 90. Okay, so remember, we're going from the hypotenuse, the biggest side, to a smaller leg. So we're going to divide. And what do we divide by? Well, there's two numbers, so we divide by the magic radical 2. So that's going to be 15 divided by radical 2. We can't have a radical on the bottom, so we need to rationalize it. We've done this before. On the top, that's going to give us 15 radical 2. On the bottom, it's going to give us just 2. And that's it. Since 15 is not odd, even, we can't... Simplify it, so that's our answer. Just 15 radical 2 over 2. And last but not least, we have um, an angle, a side, and another side missing. So we have to figure out what we're missing. We're missing the hypotenuse. From this angle, we have the adjacent. So what does that mean we need to do? That means we need to do ka, cosine. Cosine of 32 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, remember, there's a little trick here. When the x is in the bottom, we are going to switch places. So x is equal to 4.6 divided by the cosine of 32. And when we do that, that is going to give us approximately 5.4 which makes sense because it's bigger than 4.6, so that is a reasonable answer. Moving on. So we've talked about uh, rhombus and kites before. Now we're going to talk about the formula for area. It's a really simple formula. All we do is take one half and multiply the diagonals. So the diagonals multiplied divided by two, basically. So here... Very simple formula, okay? And make sure you only divide by two once. You're not gonna multiply by multiple halves like each side. So that's why I like to use divide by two instead. Basically, it's gonna be eight times six divided by two. So the area is 24 square meters. Is that easy? So here's gonna be 10 times seven divided by two. So the area is 35 square meters. The key thing to remember is you're not taking half of 7 and half of 10 and multiplying. It's just one, one half. So that's why I like to divide by 2. Just multiply and divide by 2. That easy. All right. Here's where we get a little bit more work. Okay. In the diagram, ABCD is a regular pentagon inscribed in um, circle F. Find each angle measure. So AFB. We talked about this on the last assessment. AFB is a central angle. But there's a number of central angles. There's one, two, three, four, five. So there's five angles. There's 360 degrees in the entire thing. That means this one is 72 degrees. Okay? In the previous uh, work we've done, we talked about the arc. Well, we're talking about that right now. It's central angle. We've done this before. Now, AFG, let's look at that. AFG is right here. That is basically half of that angle we just found. So 72 divided by 2 equals 36 degrees. And now, GAF, got to be careful with that one, GAF is this angle right here. Well, we know 
that AFG is 36, and we know FGA is 90. So if we add those together, we get 126. And if we do 180 in a triangle, minus 126, we get 54 degrees. Now, a quicker way to think about that is, in this triangle here, we've already used 90 degrees, which means there's only 90 left. We know the one angle is 36. That also gets us 54 degrees. So it's just one step versus two steps, but it is, you know, another way of doing the problem. Your choice. Okay, so what is the area of a regular polygon? The regular, the area of regular n-gon, which means five, six, whatever mean size it has, is one half the product of the apothem A and the perimeter P. The apothem is this line right here that forms a right angle with the base of, or the side of the shape, okay? So the opossum is the distance from the center to the midpoint of the side. Okay? It's a bisector a perpendicular bisector, okay? So remember that. So a regular nonagon is inscribed in a circle with a radius of four units. Find the area of the nonagon. So what we need though is we need this line right here, okay? So we have a little bit of work to do. First off, a nonagon, not an n-gon, a nonagon, which means nine, we have to figure out what this central angle is right here. So we're going to do 360 divided by 9, which equals 40. Now, let's just look at the little triangle. This triangle right here. Okay? The 90 degree angle, the right triangle. Well, that apothem is also an angle bisector, which means each of these is 20. It's hard to see, but those are both 20. Okay, what I like to do is take my triangle out like this, make it a little bit bigger, and put 20 right here. Now we know this is four, and we're trying to find this line, the apothem. Well, that's our um, Sokotoa again. We have our angle. From the angle, we have our hypotenuse, and we have the adjacent side. So that's cosine again. So we're going to do cosine of 20 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. This is the easier one, remember, where we just take both sides times 4. And now we just type in our calculator, x equals 4 times the cosine of 20. All right. And we'll get a number that is, and we want to not round too soon. So we let it. Let it ride a little bit. Seven, five, eight, seven, seven. The more you do more spots, the better, more accurate it will be. And you don't want to round each step because then you get further and further away from the answer. So that's the apothem. Okay. Now, to find the perimeter, we also need to find this side right here. We'll call that Y. So from that side, from 20, that is opposite. So opposite hypotenuse, that's sine. These take a lot of steps, okay? So we're gonna say sine of 20 equals opposite over four. Again, we are got the easy part because we just multiply by four. So we get y equals about 2.7, I'm sorry, 1.368. Now that's just this piece right here, 1.368. Remember, to find the perimeter, we need this one also, because this is one side 
and then two sides, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we need to do nine, sorry, we need to double it first. My mistake, got too excited, got too ahead of myself. So we need to take, you know, say KJ basically is equal to 1.368 times two. We need to double it. So that's gonna be 2.736. But we need to find the perimeter, which is gonna be nine times 2.736. which is 24.625. And now finally we can do the area. None of these calculations are hard. It's just you have to do a lot of steps to get to it. So remember the area is one half AP or AP divided by two. So we take the two numbers, 3.75877, times 24.625, all that divided by two. And we end up with an area of 46, sorry, 0.3 square units. And this didn't give us meters or inches, and it just said units, we just use units. Okay, so, we're gonna do another one, but basically this is what this is what we're doing here. It's just gonna be the same steps over and over. We gotta do all the work to get to it. Sometimes you'll be given the apothem, sometimes you won't. Be a little some will be shorter than others, but we just keep going. Okay, so you're decorating the top of a table by covering it with small ceramic tiles. The tabletop is a regular octagon with 15 in size. So notice. We saved ourselves a little trouble because we can figure out the perimeter right off the bat. 15 times 8. Okay, which is 120. So we already know the perimeter. We don't have to do any trigonometry to find it. We already know the perimeter. So this is one of our steps right here. Okay, but we do need the apothem. So remember, the apothem is going to come straight down here. All right, so we need to find this angle, which is going to be the central angle divided by two. Remember, because this is the central angle, so we're just going to divide it by two. All right. Well, I sort of lied. That is one way to do it. Okay, so we could take one, uh, 360, right? 360 divided by eight, and we'd find it was 45. And then we could do... Okay, this right here is 22.5 degrees. And then we could do trigonometry. But think about it. We actually can get there a little bit quicker. If the side is 15, that means this is 7.5. We already have 19.6. We have two of the three sides. We have the hypotenuse and one leg. So we can just do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, what I told you before is a way to do it. It's a longer way, but we would take the central angle, 45, divided by 22.5, all right? And then we would use cosine, adjacent hypotenuse, to figure out the apothem. But this is a much faster way because we already have the math, okay? So we're going to get B squared. You already know how to do this. I'm just going to get to the quicker part. 327.91. And we're going to take the square root of that and get 18.108. All right. That's the apothem. So we already have the numbers we need. That 120 and two. So area is 120 times 18.108 divided by two. So we get 1,000, sorry, yeah, 1,086.5.
square inches. Okay. Now, real quick, just bonus material. I just want you to see how it would have worked out. If I would have done cosine of 22.5 equals the side I'm looking for over 19.6, I would then multiply both sides by 19.6. And then watch what happens on the calculator. So if I do 19.6 times cosine 22.5, look what I get, 18.108. So it's the same answer, it's just a different way to go about it. I could have gotten this apothem using trigonometry or Pythagoras, your choice.